In today's video, I'm gonna run you through my entire Instagram workflow process. How I get the crisp quality on Instagram and uh, how I export everything and how I make three videos out of one video. So I actually have one for YouTube and then I have a few for Instagram as well, depending on what I want to upload. Whether it's story, the Instagram TV thing, or if it's reels, or if it's, you know, the normal Instagram post. So I'm gonna run you through my entire workflow on how I get these crispy videos on Instagram. So if you haven't checked it out already, make sure to head over to Instagram information is down there and then check out the videos to see the quality of them. Also, whilst you're down there, hit that subscribe button. That would be highly appreciated as well. And I'm also going to keep this video short or as short as possible. So without further ado, let's head over to the iPad and start creating some crispy Instagram videos. So now that we moved over to LumaFusion, I have a project here, which also happens to be the latest project of my Instagram upload and YouTube video as well. Now, this is the sound design in LumaFusion tutorial. This is also uploaded to Instagram with the behind the edit sort of type. So you see the original video here and you also see the timeline below. Now, what I've seen a few people do is to actually screen record this entire area here and then sort of crop out the line here and the size of the previous screen and the timeline. So you simply have the timeline playing and you also have the video playing, but then you will have that typical screen record quality to your Instagram account and to, to your Instagram feed. And you don't want that at all because it's not gonna look that great. And you might have a few artifacts popping up here and there in your video, which is not looking that good. So I'm gonna try to keep this video short and fast and we're just gonna dive straight into it. And I'm gonna show you a few tips on my workflow and how how I upload and uh, render different or the same video in different ways for different types of posts uh, for the story for reels and for just the normal Instagram uh, feed which is uh, 4x5 portrait mode now the first thing we're gonna do is to uh, simply render out the video here in 16 by 9 and let's go over to the share button here and the settings are quite basic but there is some tricks here which you uh, can implement into your Instagram workflow if you upload a lot uh, which might help on the quality as well I'm not saying that mm, the way that I'm doing it is the best but this works for me and personally I think my quality or the quality of my videos on Instagram is quite good so now that we are in the settings menu here for the export, we're gonna go over to the resolution. We're gonna change this to 4K and we're gonna take the video quality here down to 100 megabits per second. We're gonna keep the frame rate as it is. And I actually, from my personal testing and experience, quality 75 and extreme uh, 100 is actually giving a little bit better results than the web uh, uh, 12 and economy. Even though this is web for Instagram, it's actually a slight improvement in the quality here. So I'm going with extreme 100 megabits per second. This is what I always use. And the other thing here is depending on the device that you're filming with, especially the GoPro Hero 9 Black if you film in 5K and want to upload to Instagram or to YouTube. Uh, for most of the videos, you go with H.264, but if you happen to film with GoPro Hero 9 Black in 5K, you would need to go with HGVC H.265. I also have a video on this, which I will link down in the description, where I go through the differences between the H.264 and the H.265. So you can see the difference in the quality here, especially filming with the GoPro Hero 9 Black. Now for this, we're gonna keep this in uh, 264 and that's basically everything and we're gonna do export. Now, once this is exported, uh, we're going to move over to a new project and we are going to make that sort of behind the edit style of video, which is where you see the timeline and the original video. So now that we have the export complete, we can find it here on the top left corner and here we have the original video. The next thing we're going to do now is to just stay in the same uh, timeline and project and we're going to move over to screen record, tap on screen record and wait for the red button to show up here. 
now we have that then we're gonna go to the beginning of the timeline and what i like to do is to actually crop this in like that just crop it into something like this and uh, we're gonna go to the beginning and it's really important that you have audio enabled for this screen record as well because it will help us in the next step so once we have this screen record enabled we're gonna tap on play and we're just gonna let this play through and uh, that allows us to later import this timeline only in combination with the original video so we will have the original video not the screen recorded version but the original video and the screen recorded version of the timeline now you may also see some issues and lags here on the screen coming in right now and right here and you will see at the end but that doesn't matter as long as the timeline is playing through so if you see any issues uh, like this where it freezes and lags don't pay attention to those and don't go back to do another playback and another playback and so on because it doesn't matter as long as your timeline has a nice flow through the entire project here uh, that's what matters because that's what we're going to use so we're going to stop this screen record and uh, i'm going to move over and i'm going to duplicate this project here so we have a second one and i'm going to go over and multi-select all of them and just delete so now that we have these deleted we can go over to photos here and videos and we're going to import the latest screen recording here and we're going to put that on track one and like i said it's important to have audio in your screen record as well because here you can see the different spikes in the audio you can see the audio waveform and we're going to use that to match the original video here so we're going to place the original video and you can now see that we have the same spikes in the original video as we have in the screen record so now it's all about matching these spikes with each other something like that and we can go to the beginning of the video and we can remove the first part and we can go to the end and remove the last part and now we basically have the video, original video, and the screen record on the timeline, which allows us to adjust. But we need to do one more step to adjust this. We're going to go over to the uh, settings here, and we're going to go over to aspect ratio. We're going to change this over to Instagram 4x5 portrait. And we can now go over to settings on the uh, top clip here, which is the original video. We're going to scale this down and to something like that and just make it a slightly bigger here and we're gonna push this up towards the top to something like that make sure it's all the way to the top of the frame here so we don't see the record button and we're gonna go to the bottom clip and we're gonna do the exact same thing with this one so as we can see here we have the uh, uh, photos and videos down here on the left side so we're going to push that over to the left side so it's not visible. And here you can either change the size of it, just the entire size. Or you can uh, simply just, oh, that actually look quite good. So yeah, we can keep it like that. <laughs> anyway, uh, so if we move out to the timeline now and just scrub through, you can see we have the original video and we also have the timeline below. So here you can see that sort of behind the edit style type of post. Now this is the exact same um, way that I did it for the uh, previous one that I uploaded to Instagram. So make sure to head over and check uh, that as well so you can see the quality of the video while you see the uh, timeline as well. So now we have the uh, clips here and we're going to go over to export over to movie, over to photos, and here we have a different resolution. So this time it's set to 2.7K. We're gonna change that to 4K and the video quality is maximum 75 megabits per second. So we're gonna keep it at that. So basically 4K, 75 and render. So once this is exported, uh, you will have a video and a post which you can upload directly to Instagram and still keep that crisp quality because you just imported the original video instead of having that screen record look and video as your post. So now that this is rendered we can delete this and uh, we can change 
let's see here. We can keep the aspect at 4x5 Instagram portrait because this allows us to do more customization before we export and upload it to Instagram. Now, this is if you want to import the entire video and don't want any timeline included. Now, this is a really good example right here. Now, if you want the entire video to be in frame, we're going to go into edit and frame and fit. And if we scale this down now to have the entire video framed, you will see you will get these massive black bars here uh, on the uh, top and bottom. And we don't want that. We want this to fill the entire screen, but we actually going to keep it like this. And then we're going to reframe the video and we're going to put the parts that we want to be in frame in frame. And we're simply going to do that by changing the scale and the position of it and whatever you want to do to your video. So for this example here, if we go to the beginning of this clip right here, we're going to make a cut and then we're going to go to the end right here, almost there, make another cut here. Now we can see that we have this small part here, which is uh, uh, this clip right here. So if we go into edit on that, we can now go to the beginning or to the end, wherever we want to go in the, uh, in the video here. And we can actually position this differently. So it looks better for our four by five aspect ratio. So now we change the position of the old man here. And as you can see, it looks a whole lot better already. So if we go back, this is the first one. And you kind of see this is this is looking good as well. But if you want to have the eye centered in frame, you can go in and do the adjustments. And here you can also put in maybe a lightning effect or whatever you want to put in the eye here as well. So it really pops a little bit more. Now we have a few more here. We have this one which is uh, coming in from the right. Uh, let's go to the beginning, make a cut and uh, let's go to the end of it right here. Let's make a cut right there. And uh, for this one, let's say you want to have this in frame during the entire uh, clip here. We can go to the beginning, make a keyframe. You can position this in the center. We can go to the end and we can pull it back to the center. So now you will have additional movement to this, which will help keep the subjects or objects centered in frame for your Instagram post. Now, this is something that you can do to your entire video if you want to do that, uh, or you can do it in your main project. But like I said, it's a whole lot easier to do it once you have the rendered export and you're going to render that over to Instagram because then you can do all the changes and then you can also add the effects that you want without having any issues with cuts and all of that. So if we take this, for example, go to this point, this is just going to be a rough cut here and this, and we can now go over and we can apply an effect to this, which will be easier on the workflow because we have already the rendered clip and the sounds and everything put together. So nothing will basically change and you won't ruin anything. So if we go over and add something like, let's see if we can find a, a shake or anything like that. So let's take this. And so we have this shake coming in here right now. So if we play that through, and we have this shake. Now, if you want to fill the background as well, we can go over and duplicate this and we can go into edit on the uh, uh, one in the bottom here and you can delete the keyframes. You can center it and you can scale it if you want to do it that way. And uh, if we now play this through, you can see that we have this filling in the background as well. And we can go over and we can add uh, an effect. We can add a Gaussian 10 or five or something like that. And uh, we can also go into the other clip here. This is just to play around with different effects and make it look different depending on what you want to do. And we can crop in the top, we can crop in the bottom and we can add a uh, edge softness to it and uh, let's see something like that and if we now play back you will have this fade to it as well so you you can't see the rough lines that good and it looks 
quite cool. So if we play this through, you will have that bounce effect and we basically added this with, with no effort whatsoever because we already have the rendered video. Now, once we have done this, we're gonna go over to movie and photos. And again, we're gonna change the resolution over to 4K and we're gonna keep the remaining settings and then export. Now you can head over to Instagram, uh, information is there and you can check out the exact same post without the Viggle thing effects. I think I'm gonna remove that. Uh, but you can check out the exact same post on Instagram to see the quality of the video yourself. And uh, another thing is that we now have the uh, uh, two exports here we have this one which is uh, four by five aspect ratio and we also have that edit which is um, uh, with the uh, sort of behind the edit type of style and we also have still the original video uh, which is 16 by 9 which is here so that means you can upload this to instagram as well or to youtube whatever you want and you now have three different videos that you can upload to your social media uh, platforms. Now, if this video was longer than one minute, you could actually upload this to Instagram as well as that typical Instagram TV post where people can watch it vertically on their phones and then also you maintain the crisp quality of the video. So there you have a few tips on how I use Instagram for my videos. Another one which I forgot to have in this uh, tutorial is that if you want a specific thumbnail for your Instagram videos, make sure to make that thumbnail in the same aspect ratio. And once that thumbnail is uh, done, uh, you put it at the end of your video and it's gonna be just uh, one frame and once you get into instagram and you're gonna choose you know the picture of your video then you just choose the end of the video and that will be your thumbnail so that will be you know not visible in the video itself but you will have it as the thumbnail on your instagram if that made sense just yeah and you can really spice up your feed by doing that as well adding some additional right lightroom color gradings and all that now this video is turning out to be very low now so i'm gonna wrap it up right there and uh, i'm gonna say thanks for watching and if you haven't subscribed already hit that subscribe button down there that would be really appreciated and i'll see you in the next video